So there's a host of new medications used to treat obesity. These are known as GLP-1s. You may know them as semaglutide, Wegovi, Ozempic, Manjaro, Terzepatide, or Zepbound. These drugs are injections. These are injections that you would give yourself once a week. GLP-1 is a hormone that is made by your body already. This hormone, when the levels go very high, goes to your brain, tells your brain that you're not hungry, goes to your stomach, tells your stomach, leave that food there so that food that you eat stays in the stomach longer. These people lose weight because of this injection, and this injection is all the craze. So the history of GLP-1 is fascinating. GLP-1 was actually discovered from bariatric surgery. We found that by doing these operations, whether it's sleeve, gastric bypass, the needle switch, people made more GLP-1. And that GLP-1 caused their diabetes to improve very quickly and caused them to lose weight. Ultimately, they were able to isolate this hormone, this GLP-1, from the spit of a lizard. And now that spit has been modified into an injection that we can now take to replicate some of the benefits of bariatric surgery through a shot. So these GLP-1 drugs, they started off as diabetes medications. As a consequence of their treatment, people lost weight. So now they're indicated for both diabetes as well as weight loss. The general recommendation is that someone needs to be above a BMI of 30 or above a BMI of 27 with diabetes to be considered candidates for these medications. These injections do have some side effects. People will have nausea early on and they may have a feeling of just fullness in their stomach because their stomach is literally full of food and not emptying. The most common concerns that we see or the complaints that we hear from our patients are nausea, diarrhea, or constipation. We also worry about getting pancreatitis. So there are three types of patients that get put on these medications. The first type of patient is someone that's simply trying to lose weight. The second type of patient may be someone that had bariatric surgery years ago and is now starting to see the weight slowly creep up. That patient would also be a good candidate for bariatric surgery. And the third type of person is someone who's too big, maybe five, six, seven hundred pounds, trying to get bariatric surgery, but they're not safe for surgery. They're not healthy for anesthesia. So we put these people on these medications for a few months before surgery to help them to get to a healthy place so that we can give them a more definitive treatment, bariatric surgery. If you're trying to get this disease treated, you need to go to somebody who offers all the treatments, right? You can't just have one hammer for a variety of nails. Some people need medications, some people need surgery, some people need both. And so if a physician can offer you everything, that's probably the best place to find the solution that's right for you. So with the growing popularity of GLP-1s, we are seeing that patients can't get the drug. The companies can't make it fast enough. Some patients are getting their drugs from compounding pharmacies. And what that means is the pharmacy knows the molecular structure and is making it on their own. The problem is the Food and Drug Administration can't monitor this, can't control this, and we worry about these compounding pharmacies because we don't really know what our patients are getting. So you can get the real thing or the compound and see how you do. So the weight loss results with these GLP-1 drugs is highly variable. What we do know is that people will tolerate the medication early and then after a while, it may not be working quite as well. So the average weight loss that we quote our patients is about 15 to 20% of total body weight. So if you're about 300 pounds, we could estimate that you'll lose 45 to 60 pounds or so. Of the weight that you lose, there are concerns about muscle loss. Some people talk about 40% of the weight that you do lose with these medications being muscle. So if you lost 50 or 60 pounds, 20, 30 of those pounds may be muscle. The other thing is, is when the weight comes back, we're not sure that the muscle comes back. So if you stop the drugs and you regain weight, after all, any medication stops working after you stop it. If you regain that weight, you may not be regaining the muscle that you lost. So people who are on these medications need to A, fill their stomachs with the building blocks of muscle, protein, and B, do a lot of resistance exercise to maintain the muscle they do have.